everyone, welcome to our video tutorial for this fluffy poodle cat jacket that you can see Malibu wearing here. So I hope you enjoy it. Please like, share and subscribe and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so to make this fluffy poodle cat jacket, you'll need, if you're making it the same way as, as me, you'll need a feather or fluffy yarn. Now this one here is a 100% nylon feather yarn. Um, yeah, I'm going to use that one for the fluffy portions or the fl fluffy sections of the jacket. And then this one here is a off-white, which actually looks kind of pale pink next to the pale pink of the fluffy yarn. But it's about a three-weight. It's an acrylic 80%, 20% wool blend. And I'm going to use that for the non-fluffy uh, sections of the jacket. You'll need a at least one crochet hook that corresponds to your yarn. Now, because you're using different yarns, you might want to use two different crochet hooks. I'm going to stick with this four millimeter throughout. You'll need at least two buttons. I'm uh, only going to use two for this project, but you might want three. Um, these two, one is for the neck band and one is for the band just behind the front legs, so around the ribs. Um, I tend to recommend that you go on the larger size for buttons just to help prevent any choking hazard. Um, these ones are about two centimeters across. Okay, so um, yeah, you can use any size buttons. You can use two if you want to add a third band around the, the belly, then you can, you know, you might need a third button. You'll need um, at least one darning needle to weave in your ends, but you might want a smaller needle that will sew on your buttons, depending on the size of your buttonholes. You might find it useful to have a stitch marker, a pair of scissors to snip your ends, and you'll definitely want a tape measure. You'll need to take two main measurements from your cat, potentially three or four, um, yeah, the, you know, you, there's lots of measurements you can take, but the two main ones you need are the neck circumference and the circumference around the ribs just behind the front legs. So you could also add to that, if you're adding a belly band, you could add a, a band or a strap around the belly just behind the, just, sorry, just in front of the back legs. And then you, you would potentially want a measurement from the neck down to where you want it to fall on the back. Okay, um, the, the fifth measurement that you might want is a measurement from the neck to the, f the well, it's, let's say it's the second uh, strap, the one that falls just behind the front legs. So you might need to take five measurements. You can work this with just the two measurements, the neck circumference and the rib circumference, but, you know, the more measurements you have, the better. Okay, so here's one I've made previously with uh, this grey and a soft grey. Now, actually, these yarns are exactly the same as what I'm using today, just in different colours. So I've got this feather yarn here for the fluffy sections, and then I've got this this light grey here for the in-between sections. Um, you can see that this one I've just made with two bands. So I've made, this is the neck band here with a button that undoes. Okay, so you don't need to slide this over your cat's head. You have buttons on both of the bands, and this is the one that goes around the ribs, just behind the front legs. Okay, and then you could add, if you wanted to, a third band. I haven't on this one. Um, I, don't th I don't need it for, for what I'm making it for, but you might want a third band, so adding a third band in this area here, and that would fall just uh, in front of the back legs. So you might want, like I said, that third button. Now the stitches and technique this, that you'll need to know to make this, it, it is beginner friendly, but it's probably towards the you know, slightly more experienced end of beginner. Um, you'll need to know how to uh, slip knot onto your hook, how to create a chain. Uh, you'll need to know how to double crochet, how to front post and back post double crochet. You'll need to know how to, from there, I think single crochet, yeah, we single crochet around the border of the, the garment at the end. And weaving in your ends, you'll certainly not need to know how to do that. Sewing on your buttons. And then the what makes this more slightly more than, than absolute beginner friendly is that you'll need to know how to size a garment. So this is not an exact pattern. I'm going to lead you through the steps that I do to size it to Melba. 
okay and then you can size it to your particular size of cat and proportion of cat okay so it's it's almost impossible to give you an exact pattern with you know exact number of stitches exact number of rows that type of thing because I want to give you enough leeway in the pattern to fully customize this to your own cat okay and I'm going to tell you how to do that as we move through and that's why those measurements are really important the more measurements you have the better now this one is made for quite a large cat so the length is around 35 centimeters here the next circumference is 30 the the band around the ribs is 40 centimeters and um, yeah so it's made for quite a big cat and I'm going to tailor the one I make today to Melba I'm going to make this the pink one for Melba so I'm going to show you how to tailor it to your own cat you can increase it as you want to um, actually double crochet increase you will need to know how to do as well and you can you know you can fully tailor those increases um, you can even tailor the stitches that you use in this section here. I've used a front post and back post um, double crochet, but you could just use a normal double crochet if you don't like the look of this, this ribbed effect. You could use a single crochet. You could use a half double crochet. I'm going to show you what I did to make this one, and we'll talk about you know those details further as we move through. So um, enough of me. Let's get started. Okay, so take your uh, non-fluffy yarn and make a slip knot onto your hook, however you do that. Now, what we're going to do from here is chain the, so we're starting at the top, okay? We're going to start with this area here. Now, actually, just to mention that what you can do is that you can tailor the, th the width of these sections to suit your taste of, you know, the look that you want. Um, and also you might have to tailor them to the size of your cat. Okay, so the length of your cat. So what you want to aim to do as best as possible is that this band falls or these bands fall on a in section that is with your non fluffy yarn okay so just to to show you here so i've done this neck area is a little bit thinner it's uh how many rows one two three rows there and then these sections here i've done six rows to make them a bit thicker and these sections here the fluffy rows um, obviously the yarn is a bit um, you know it's a bit thicker so it, it you know makes larger sections for the same number of rows but I think I've used six and six and then this last one I've actually done a bit bit longer and I've done eight down here okay so you get to decide exactly how many rows you want to make for each section it will depend on your yarn the size of the hook you're using and also the measurements that you've taken from your cat so the first thing we're going to do is make a chain to the next circumference and leaving a little bit extra for, um, yeah, so chain, chaining to the centimeters of the next circumference that you've measured for your cat. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So just making chains, you don't need to count your chains, it doesn't matter how many you've got, you just need it to be the next circumference of your cat plus a little bit extra so I what I tend to do is leave about what two to around one to two centimeters extra now why I do that is because often um, you know it depends on what, what you're using the jacket before but um, if you're using it to take your cat outside you need um, a little bit extra to um, you know to fit a harness underneath and um, you know it might be a jacket harness so it has a little bit of thickness to it so you might need to leave a little bit extra if you're just using this for your cat inside then you know no problem you can just um, you know you know be closer to the next circumference you might only need a centimeter extra remember also that you need to allow for your button okay so if you've got a really large button you're going to have to leave a little bit extra my buttons aren't too big so I'm going to leave about two centimeters extra so for example for Melba her, her next circumference is around 24 centimeters I'm going to chain to about 26 27 centimeters so that gives me a good amount to fit her harness underneath and also um, you know sew my button on so you go ahead and 
um, hopefully that all makes sense and you can work out how much um, you need to chain for um, you know how many centimeters you need to go for for your chain I'm going to continue on and chain the the uh, length that I need so you you do the same and I'll be back shortly okay so I've chained the length that I need and then I'm just going to chain two extra as a turning chain okay so we're going to the first row is a double crochet row so find that third chain from your hook and you're going to double crochet into that third chain and then you're going to double crochet so this is US terminology double crochet into each chain until you get to the end of your chain so I'll meet you at the end just keep continuing on one double crochet in each chain and I'll meet you shortly okay I'm just putting my last double crochet in that last chain and that's the end of row one now just a reminder I'm using double crochet with front and back post double crochets for these rows you can use whichever stitch you want okay you don't have to stick with what I'm doing um, this is like I showed you before this is the effect that you get you get this kind of ribbed effect um, and I kind of like it because it, it gives a bit more texture to these areas and it just makes it look like it's a little bit thicker for the yarn that I'm using but you know you could just use pure double crochets in here just without the front boat post back post half double crochets single crochets you can you know depending on how much you want a difference between these two sections okay so you you know lots of creative decisions there I'm going to show you what I do and you know you can adjust it from there so we've got our row one of double crochet now chain two and turn now we're going to start our front and back post double crochet so um, yarn over as you normally would take this first double crochet here and work behind it so insert your hook behind it and then just complete a double crochet as normal so that's your first front post double crochet now we're going to do a back post double crochet so yarn over now you bring your hook around the back and across the front of that next stitch and then you complete your double crochet sort of at the back there okay and then we do another front post so inserting the hook complete your double crochet and then a back post so coming around the back through and in front of that stitch and complete your stitch so I don't run through if you're familiar with my videos I don't run through these stitches in any great detail so if you need a brush up there's heaps of heaps of YouTube videos on these stitches so you can um, just look at one of those if you need to you know run through this a bit more slowly if I'm going too fast for you in this tutorial so continue down your your second row doing alternating front post back post double crochets and I'll meet you so you're starting to see the ribbed effect coming out already so I'll meet you down at the end of my row okay so I'm just putting my last uh, front post my last stitch is a front post so I'm just putting that last stitch in there and just a reminder you don't need to work into your chain so just leave that as it is and that's the end of row two so now you'll get to decide whether you want to move on to more rows so I'm going to move on to a third row um, you don't you don't have to if you're using a thicker uh, yarn than me you might want to stop at row two for this neck portion I'm going to go for my third row here and you could go for more rows if you want a wider neck section but I'm going to go for one more row so chain two and turn and now we're going to be working um, so we're going to be working to create a like a ribbed effect okay so we want to push the ones that are sitting to the back we want to push them further back and the ones that are to the front we want to bring them further forward okay so this for me this first one is going to be a back post oops 
I've got to yarn over. So you, this will vary on your work. It won't be the same as mine. Okay, and then I've got a front post. So you want to bring the ones that are sitting forward more forward. The ones that are sitting back, you want to push them further back. Okay, so on your work, you'll do what you need to do. So your, your stitch um, you know, sequence won't be the same as mine, most likely. So when one is sitting, see the stitch here is sitting back. It was actually a front post on that side, on the other side, but it's actually going to be a back post now because we want to push it further back. And then my next one was actually a back post on that side, but I want to pull it further forward. So I'm going to do a front post. Okay, so you continue on for however many more rows you want to do. I'm going to do this, this one more row. And I'll meet you and then we'll, we'll uh, talk about changing to our fluffy yarn for the next section. And just a reminder, when you're deciding how wide you want this section to be, just keep in mind that you want to add, well, you, you know, you may not want to, but what I did is I've added this area here of um, fluffy section at the top. So you might want to make an allowance for that at the top of your neckband. So that will just, um, you know, be a factor in deciding how wide you make this area here. Now, like I said, with my three rows uh, that I did, it's about three centimeters, okay, that I've done that section, um, the non-fluffy section. So just keep all of those things in mind as you're making your design decisions. Okay, so I'm just at the end of my round three, and I'm just putting my last stitch in here, which happens to be a back post, double crochet, and a reminder you don't need to work into the chain. Okay, so I've done my neckband as wide as I want it to be, so you can continue on and make it wider if you want to, but now we're going to create the buttonhole at this end. Okay, so we're going. what we're going to do is just chain one, and we're going to place single crochets along this edge here. Okay, so what I tend to try to do is not get into the gap between the stitches. I try to get into the center of my double crochets. So just place, just evenly spaced, it doesn't matter how many, just because obviously you're not working into uh, stitches as such, you're working just into the edge of the row there. So place just evenly spaced single crochets along your edge. And then we're going to chain one and turn, and this is where we're going to create the actual buttonhole. Now, you'll tailor this to the size of the button that you're using. So I'm going to place a single crochet in that first stitch. And then let's see how many stitches I've got. One, two, three, four, five. I could put one, and I'm going to actually put one on the end there. So what I think I'm going to do here, because my buttons aren't super big, so you'll need to go through this process for yourself and work out how, how big you need or how long you need this chain to be to fit your button. So I'm actually going to do a single crochet again in the next stitch, and then I'm going to chain three for my button. You might chain more for your button, or you might, and you might leave out that that that. Uh, that previous stitch and then I'm going to single crochet in that second to last stitch and then right on this corner edge here I'm going to add another single crochet now this will get covered by your fluffy yarn so you know it doesn't have to be super neat but I'm going to because I see it sort of makes it off off the edge I'm actually going to work right into the edge there and that's my last stitch. Now, what I'm going to do is just make sure that my button fits through, and it does. You want it to fit through nice and snugly. And then what we're going to do is just go back one more time. So chain one and place single crochets, one in each of your stitches or chains, all the way across. That will just reinforce that edge a little bit and make it easier to work our fluffy yarn into it. Okay, so just go across to the other, across to the other side. And yeah, 
I think that's good. So you've got your buttonhole done. Okay. So now we're going to move on to our fluffy row. So what you're going to do here is you're actually just going to tie off. So what what you need to do here, so we've done our neckband area. I'll just show you on this last one. We've done our neckband area, and I apologize, it's a little bit harder to see when the fluffy yarn is already on there. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a row around the edge with my fluffy yarn, okay? And um, that will then, um, can, we will then continue on from there to make this this fluffy section with some increases on the sides okay so you can just tie off here so yarn over pull through just leave it an amount for a tail that you can weave in or work in just tighten that off okay so I've got my two tails there now what you're going to work out here, and this, again, I can't give you an exact measurement for this, but you want to start your, this fluffy row. Um, so let me just open this up. This looks like a big Muppet. <laughs> okay, so what you want to do is you want to start your fluffy row here. Okay? Or this fluffy edge here. Now, this will depend, so where you started exactly will depend on how you want it to wrap around your cat, okay? The general rule that I use is that two-thirds here, this is two-thirds of your length, and this is one-third of your length. If That's just a general rule, okay? Um, and it also, like I said, depends how much you want it to wrap around the edges or the sides of your cat. Okay? So, um, yeah. Again, it's really hard for me to give you an exact measurements in this these patterns. Um, just because, you know, I want you to tailor it to your, own, to your own needs. But that's kind of the proportions I work on. So one third here is left for the body area. And then... Sorry, two thirds is left for the body area, and le I leave one third, which is the bit that wraps around and then eventually does up the button. Okay, but again, if you want to take a measurement from your cat to correspond to this area here between this area and this area across the top of your cat, then you know by all means do that. Okay, it will depend on the size of your cat, how, you know, how wide your cat is, how thin your cat is, how, you know, how much you want it to wrap around your cat. So I'm going, this is where your stitch marker might be, might be useful. Okay, so you want to just be aware of where your buttonhole side is. Okay, so that's the, that's the edge that you want to leave the third, that's the, the end that you want to leave the third on. Okay, so you're going to find the corresponding area. So I want this to be about a third. Let me just measure how long I've oh, got my button. Just make a measurement. So I've got about, let's say if I even that out, I've got about 30 centimeters. So I'm going to leave about 10 centimeters on this end. Yeah, I might even leave, yeah, let's just make it a little bit less. So I'm going to put my stitch marker here. Okay. Now what you can do is you can just try this on your cat. So this is the area that will sit, um, you know, starting to run down the back. Okay. Now I hope none of that is super confusing because it's not easy to <laughs> explain. But hopefully by seeing this one, you can kind of tell where I'm going. So this is the part that runs down the back, this area here, and this area here is the part that's left that wraps around and underneath the neck to do up on the other side okay so what you'll need to do is you'll need to tie on at that section there and that area there 
Okay, so take your yarn. Now what I do to tie on is I just I need it this way. Which one am I going to work it this way? So you want to work down across your buttonhole and then up this edge and then back to here. And then we're going to start working backwards and forwards for that section running down the back. Okay, so I want it to be this way. So I'm just going to tie on where my stitch marker was. So the way I tie on is I just pull up a loop and then I chain one. And that's my tie on. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one double crochet. Actually, sorry, excuse me, I need to chain two first. So we chained one just to secure it and then chain an extra two. Now you can work in your tail here if you want to. And then we're just going to place, so I actually work back into that same place where I tied on. So I don't count my chain as a stitch at all. Okay, so then I'm just going to place one double crochet using this yarn in each stitch. Now, the, the good thing about this feather yarn is that it's very forgiving. So, it covers up any flaws. The thing that's not so great about it is that it's not always easy to work with. So there is a little bit of, hmm, how can we say, working by feel <laughs> a little bit when we get to this feather yarn. And this is another thing that makes this kind of on the beginner, advanced beginner end of the beginner range as a garment just because this yarn can be a little bit messy to work with so i'm going to work a double crochet border around my neck band let's just keep going over the so i'm just putting one double crochet in each stitch or chain whichever edge you're working i'm actually working the chain edge there and then you want to work over your buttonhole and you can work in your you can work in your tails or you can just you know you can always weave in your tails later you don't have to work them in as you go so I'm coming along my buttonhole and I'm just going to place one double crochet in each of those stitches okay sorry about that my camera cut out there so I'm just working along the edge of the buttonhole one double crochet in each stitch across there and I'm working in my ends as I go and you might need to put two two stitches in each um, corner depending on um, you know how tight they are but you just don't want your edge to be too tight because it'll just all, all um, sort of warp the project so just make sure if you need to put two stitches in the corner then please do and actually I'm going to now I've said it, it can be a little bit tricky finding that that loop again when you're uh, working with this feather yarns but I'm actually going to put another stitch in there and then I'm just going to keep working along I think I've probably worked my ends in enough there and I'm on the stitch edge of my of my uh, of my band so they're easier to work in here so this will end up being the top of my neckline so you go ahead finish up uh, this edging this single sorry this double crochet edging and so you work all the way around to here and then we're going to start with some increases okay so keep on working around keep on going all the way around this edge all the way around here and then back to where you started and then we're going to work backwards and forwards here okay so I'll see you shortly okay so I'm just putting in my last stitch or two here and I'm actually going to, even though I'm, I'm right at the next stitch, I'm actually going to put 
um, a, another stitch back in that starting point just to make sure that's nice and covered you can't tell where I started so like I said this yarn's really forgiving so you can kind of kind of do what you want with it so I've um, added an, another stitch in there okay so from here um, this is where you're going to start to size your garment okay so what I did on this previous one is I increased in my fluffy rows and I didn't increase in my non fluffy rows okay I just kept these no increases and then I've increased here okay so what you can do is you can do the same as what I'm doing or you can tailor your increases to suit the size of your cat okay so I'm going to chain two here and turn so your chain never counts as a stitch here now I'm going to increase in this first stitch so this is where this fluffy yarn gets a little bit tricky okay it's a little bit tricky to work with because you kind of have to feel where the stitch is okay but you get the hang of it pretty quickly honestly it kind of it starts to work itself out and like I said it's forgiving if you miss the stitch a little bit and you work a little bit lower or you know it's not a big deal it because it, it, it covers up a whole lot of sins this this yarn and then I'm placing a second double crochet back in that same stitch because I'm making it increase so I'm going to be increasing at the beginning and the end of the rows okay so again you can tailor these increases to what you need them to be you can increase at both ends you can increase at one end you can increase every second row you can increase every row now again I'm uh, you know I keep saying this but um I know there's been questions on some of my previous videos is that I, I purposely want you to be able to fit this yourself okay and it might take it just a little bit of trial and error but um, you know you want it to fit your cat properly you don't want to just do what what fits Melba so you want to you want to you know be able to size this to your particular cat okay so I've done an increase at that end at, at the beginning of this row and I'm actually I'm going to increase at the end here too so I'm going to do my increases only in these fluffy rows and I'm going to increase at the beginning of each row and at the end of each row and as I said for this these fluffy areas here I did six rows okay so I'm going to do the same because I kind of like these proportions so I'm going to do six rows and some increasing in each row at the beginning and the end so just feel where you place your stitch you can kind of if you're using a similar yarn to mine you'll be able to kind of feel where that stitch is and you'll just be placing one double crochet in each stitch and sometimes it's a little bit tricky to work with and but you eventually kind of become kind of kind of intuitive with it actually you start to know where the next stitch is going to go and if it doesn't your hook doesn't land exactly in the stitch you know it's no big deal because this fluffy yarn will sort of cover it up anyway so go ahead finish this row I'll meet you at the end of this row and then um, you know we'll talk through about starting the the second row of this area and then you'll go for however many um, rows you want um, oh excuse me so you'll go for as many rows as you want so like I said six rows here and you want to coincide you know you might need to take a few measurements to work out where you're going to need this band to fall because you want to work out um, that your band can be placed on a non fluffy row okay so you want to work it out so that's going to happen okay so hopefully that's clear <laughs> you know you don't want to make this area too big um, you you know you could make it smaller than what I've done here but um, you also don't want to make it too big so it's it's not going to allow you to put this this band on a non fluffy section okay so I'm going to go for my six rows, but I, in the, it just, um, you know, for now I'm going to meet you at the end of this row. Okay, so I'm at the end here, 
Now, once again, you'll need to be a little bit intuitive about where you finish your rows. So what I like to do is I like to go just a little bit further. So I, I want these edges to kind of line up on this side. So I'm going to go one more there. And I'm actually going to increase here. So I'm going to place a second stitch in that last stitch. Okay, so I've started my increases. So now I'm going to chain two and turn. And once again, I'm going to increase. Now you can increase every second row, but I'm going to increase every row just to make sure that this wraps quite, quite, um, you know, quite nicely around the sides, Melbourne's sides, but without, you know, making it too big that it either drags or it, you know, impedes her movement at all. So. You keep on going backwards and forwards with or without increases and go to the number of rows that you want. I'm going to come back when I've reached my sixth row and uh, yeah, I'll meet you soon. Okay, so I'm just putting my last two stitches in and I've actually only done five rows and you know, sometimes you just have to make these decisions on the fly, which is what I'm doing. I did six for the last one, but that's for a bigger cat, quite a bit bigger than Melba actually. So I'm going to just do five rows here in this first fluffy section. And as you can see, I've got these increases happening on the edge here. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the next area of non-fluffiness. So take your your yarn and we're just gonna I, I just do always the, this really simple color change just by placing my yarn over top of the hook pull up a loop oops chain one and then tighten tighten everything now you can snip off that end and I tend to do this all at the end, just in case I need to go back. But you can tie a simple knot here, and that adds an extra layer of security. Or, and or, you can start to work in your tail ends immediately. So now we're going back to this uh, stitch here. And I'll chain my two and turn. So I'm going to start to work in my work in my ends. Now there's two things about this next section okay that you need to keep in mind. The, the one is that you're going to add this second band okay wherever you need it to be. Um, then so Melba's distance between her neck here where this will sit so it kind of this kind of folds up so I'm not I'm not measuring it from right from the end I'm actually measuring it from the center of this area here and that distance for Melba to where I need to start the this the second band is about 10 or 11 centimeters so I'm going to make it about 11 centimeters so I, I you know I prefer to overestimate than underestimate so um you know so it sits slightly behind the the front legs rather than you know it's too short and then you know obviously then you're in trouble but um the, like I said this is a much bigger cat and I left about 12 centimeters to the from the neck to this second band so you'll again have to work that out for yourself and where you need to start the band. Actually, the second thing I wanted to mention too is I didn't do it on this one here, but what you can do is you can leave an area of, um, you know, leave an area open for a leash hole if you want to. I didn't do it on this one. I actually forgot to do it on this one. And by the time I finished it, it's, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go back to put the leash hole. But um, remember that you can add a leash hole. And I'm going to add a leash hole to this one for Melba. So we're just going to, and I'm going to work in my tail ends as I go. So once again, that doesn't count as a stitch. So go back into the place you tied on. And 
I'm going to work in my tail ends. So this first row across will just be a double crochet row before we start our front post, back posts. So go ahead, work across to your other side just with one double crochet in each stitch, working in your tail if you want to, and it'll just be a little bit of intuition again where your stitches go. So you'll just have to feel along for the next stitch. And then the next stitch, just feel along there. Yep, got it. And so I'm going to do a double crochet row right to this other side. And I'm not increasing in these rows here. Okay, you can continue to increase if you want to. You would just place two stitches in the end stitch and or two stitches in the other side as well. So again, you can continue on with the increases if you want to. I'm not going to here. I've increased as much as I want to for now. So I'm going to continue on with this first row and I'll meet you at the end here. Okay, so I'm just at the end of this row. So just make always make sure that you go right to the end of the row because sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to see that last stitch. And let's make sure, yep, I'm right at the end there. Okay, so that's our first row. And now we're going to chain two and it's just going to be the same as the as the neck band. So here is where you can leave a um, you can leave a leash hole if you want to. You might want it to be a little bit further down. I actually, yeah, I think I'm going to let it be a little bit further down. So I won't do it in this row. But we're just going to do the same, that front post alternating back post sequence. So back post. And front post. And you'll have to work out so can you'll continue down that row but also keep in mind that you're thinking about where this part is going to be because we're going to chain where you need this to be we're going to chain and work this extra section okay where you need it to be so um, let me just give you an idea of where mine will be so i want that to be about 11 centimeters so I'm actually going to so from the center of let me just show you where I'm measuring from so from the center here of the neck band down to where I know that Melba's measurement will be I need her her band her second band her, her rib band to start at about the 11 centimeter mark so I'm pretty close already I'm going to do this row and then I'm going to start let's say I'll start my band on the next row Okay, so you'll work that out where you need your band to be. And I'm going to continue with this row first. And then I'll show you how I create that, that rib band. Okay, so go ahead, finish your, finish your row. And you might be starting your belly band on this row, you know. So you might need to skip forward on the video. But I'm going to finish off this round first and then I'm going to start my belly band on the next round. And ideally, you want it to be, and it, it doesn't have to be, but it's going to look much nicer if your belly band starts on the same side as your, as your um, neck band. So it's kind of a symmetrical garment, you know. I mean, you know, it's not a disaster if you have your belly band on the other side but it just won't look as look as cool you know I mean you might not mind but I like to have both of my bands coming out from the same side of the garment and then my buttons are both on the same side okay so I'm going to that's going to be perfect for me as you can see I'm going to work across here and then I'm going to work back and then that and I'm going to start my band on the next row so it's going to be on the on the same side as as this band so that works out perfectly so continue on um, you know or stop if you need to you might need to skip forward on the video to where I'm starting the band but I'm going to finish this row and then I'm going to work back and I'm going to meet you back here okay where, where I'll start my belly band okay so I'm at the end where or at the yeah at the end where I want to make my second band so all that is a matter of doing is chaining to the length that you need your band to be. Okay, so you will have taken a measurement around the ribs 
and then you'll make a chain that incorporates that measurement. So obviously you're measuring from this end that incorporates that measurement. So for Melbourne, hers is about 36 centimetres. So I'm going to add, a little, you know, again, like I did with the neckband, I'm going to add a couple of centimetres to that. So I'm going to chain to a total length of about 38 centimetres. So, well, you know, the chain is not 38 centimetres, but a total length with all of this of about 38. So I'm at about 37 there, so I just need a couple more chains. One, two, three. And let's check it. So, yeah, I'm at about 38 there, so that's going to be plenty. So then I'll just do my two as a turning chain, and then I'm going to work my double crochets back along that chain, starting in that third chain from the hook, as we did right at the beginning, and then just double crochet along that chain. And then, of course, we're going to continue with our, our uh, front post, back post pattern as we move across here. And then we're going to work backwards and forwards um, for however many rows and how wide we want this section to be. Now, I'm going to add in my leash hole, I think, in this row here. So I'll come back and I'll show you how to add in your leash hole. And uh, I'll be back. And actually, just to remind you that the other thing you need to take into account when you're chaining this length is that you need to allow for your button as well. Okay, so I'm going to keep going and I'll be back soon. Okay, and I've just reached my edge here, so I'm just going to continue with those back post, front posts as, as they come. So front post and then back. Okay, so continue on and I'll meet you where I'm going to place my leash hole. Okay, so I've actually come to the next row where I'm going to put my leash hole. So you can make your leash hole as wide as you want it to be. So obviously you want it to be kind of in the center. So I'm just going to measure that up. So I've got two stitches on this side. I think I'm going to chain four here to three and four and then skip for one two three four let's see how that looks as a leash hole yeah see I think that's going to be that's going to be fine as a leash hole so it, obviously it'll depend on the harness that you're using if you're adding a leash hole but um yeah I th most of Melba's that's going to be fine I think I maybe even could do it in the next row down. You're better to do it a little bit further down than um, too far up. Um, just for how the leash fits. Let me just remeasure that again for mine. Yeah, I think that's going to be fine for mine. But you can just measure on your on your harness and make sure that it's you know where you need it to be, and then you just continue on. And actually, maybe I should go back. Let's just go back and make sure. Because I forgot to do that as a double, as a back post. One, two, three, four. Come in here. So yeah, entirely optional to add this leash. Add this leash hole. But because Melba is a cat who goes out on leash. I'll leave that hole for her. It's just going to make things much easier. When she's wearing her harness underneath, I can just, um, you know, put the leash clasp through that through that little hole. Okay, so I'm going to continue on. Obviously, when you get to here, you'll start to do your front post, back post. And then you'll work however many rows you want to work of this, of this section. Now, in the last one, I worked six rows. How many have I done here? One, two, three, four, five. This is my sixth row. So I think I'm actually going to work. Yeah, no, I think I'll need to do one more. Let me just make sure I've counted right. One, that's one row there. One, two, three, four. No, actually, this is my fifth row. I've got one more row, and I think that's probably where I'm going to stop on that sixth row. 
So I'd like to make sure that I put um, one more row across the top of this leash hole. So I'm going to go for one more row. So you can see that this, you know, the number of rows that you do, you can adjust it as you move along and adapt to the sizing that you need. So I'm going to go across my across my um, belly band, my rib band, and then back across one more time for one more row to give me my six rows. And then I'm going to change again back to this the fluffy color. Okay, so I'll meet you once. I'm going to assume that you're okay to come across here with your front post back post obviously when you if you end on a back post the next one will be a front post back post just just as we did at the beginning here okay so I'm going to continue and I'll meet you when I get back down here okay so I'm just working across my across my leash hole now so I'm just going to put one double crochet in each of those chains a little bit tricky to get in And you could just work into the chain space if you wanted to. Actually, that's not where I want that one to go. Actually, I'm just going to work into the chain space. I think that's going to be easier. Two. I skipped four, so I'm just going to put four double crochets in there. Let me see if I'm happy with that. Yeah, I think that's going to be okay. And what I've decided is I'm actually going to go for one more row as well. I want my I want my belly band to be a little bit thicker, and also I want to um, do some you know front post back post over this bit as well. So I'm going to go. That's a back post. I'm going to go for one more row. So that's going to make six row seven rows for me for this area which is fine, no problem at all. It's just one more than what I did before. But, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, pivoting as I need to, to make this fit and, and accommodate Melba's size. So, um, yeah, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go for one more row across, and I'll meet you when I'm over here. And actually, that'll be quite ideal to finish on this edge because then I can just go ahead and do my buttonhole as we did for the first side. I don't need to tie off. I can just do it straight from the edge here. So um, yeah, I'll meet you when I get back down here. Okay, so I've finished all the rows that I want to do for my belly band section. And now I'm just going to do exactly the same as I did for the neck band. I'm just going to place one single crochet in each, you know, just kind of evenly spaced along the edge there. And I'm going to put one right down on the edge. And then I'm just going to create my, my second buttonhole in the same way. So I'll put one single crochet, one single crochet, chain three, and then I'll skip two and then I'll just do single crochets in these last two stitches. Chain one and then I'll just go back over them. So this is just a, oops, not yarn over. So this is just a reminder of what we did before. And then I'm just going to place one single crochet in each of those chains. And I know that that's a good size for my button because I checked it on on the neck band. Three. And then two at the end here. One right in the right in the corner. Okay, so there we go. I've done my neck band section, oh sorry, belly band section. So I'm just going to yarn over and I'm going to tie off here. And then we're going to move on to the next section of fluffy yarn. And so I'm just going to tie on, it doesn't matter which end you tie on, I'll just tie on over in this end. And then I'll 
chain my two. And uh, yeah, now you can decide if you continue on with your increases, a few more increases. I'm going to do probably a couple more um, just to widen this out across Melba's belly. And so I'll just put two stitches back in that first stitch. Oh, and now we've got Melba here. So I'm going to work across. So obviously here, when you just place your one double crochet in each stitch, um, you can increase in this end here. But obviously, you just remember that you'll stop here. You won't keep going along the along the band yet. Okay, we'll do that at the end. So uh, yeah, so remember to stop here, and then you'll work backwards and forwards for probably the same amount of rows as you did here. You might want to increase it and make it a you know slightly wider. You uh, you know it's entirely up to you how you manage these sections. And then you'll you'll be starting to think about how long you want your coat to be or your jacket to be. So this one is meant to be a full length one. Um, it's probably closer to three quarter length, um, but it's you know it's a pretty full length. So I'm going to go I think to the same um, sort of length. It won't be quite as long as this one because this one's for a longer cat. But I think I'm what I'm going to end up doing is I'll do another band of fluff. I'll do another band of of this section here, and then I'll do I'll finish off like I did with this one with. A final area of fluffy yarn so again that's something that you'll work out how you now want to finish off you might just do this next section and have like a half length jacket or you could do the the whole length you know what you don't need to do another one of these sections you could just do the whole finish off the whole jacket in a in the fluffy section so you know so many options here it's it's entirely up to you and how you want this to turn out but i think i'm going to probably do um and i often don't know until i get there <laughs> but i'm probably going to do another row or another section of fluffy i'll do another section of this and then i'll do another section of fluffy and finish off with the fluffy section so um yeah you decide what you want to do i'm just going to work backwards and forwards now for this fluffy section and i'll see you once i've done that so just remember actually a reminder before i go just make sure you stop around here Okay, you could put your stitch marker in and just remind yourself to make sure that you stop here and then just work backwards and forwards. Okay, so I'll see you soon. Okay, so I've done my next fluffy section and I'm going to change back to the non-fluffy section. So I'm going to go probably for about the same as this width here. And then I'm going to go back to another fluffy section. So I'll see you once I've done that. Oh, actually, just to mention, I did one increase here along the side. And now I'm just working backwards and forwards. Okay, it's as wide as I, I want it to be. So, yeah, just a reminder, you, you just need to check those dimensions either on your cat or using some measurements. Just, you know, so it's not too wide. And I'm happy with how wide this is on Melba. So I'm going to keep going just with... Um, you know these front post and back post double crochets and uh, no increases at this point so eventually I'll get to in the next fluffy section I'll start to do a few decreases but we'll, we'll work through that when we get to it so I'm going to continue for my next non fluffy section and I'll see you soon okay so I'm back and I'm just tying on my yarn for my last fluffy section now this is the section where you can start to do some decreases and that's what I'm going to do so I'm actually going to do um, decreases in three areas I'm going to decrease at each end so the beginning and the end of each row and then I'm also going to do a decrease in the center here somewhere so you can tailor these decreases to you know whatever you want for the shape of your jacket but I want mine to kind of come in a little bit okay before I finish off the jacket now just a couple of things to keep in mind you don't want it to go too close to the tail because while your cat's walking it can irritate the base of their tail and that can be a bit overstimulating for them so I would not go too close to the tail um, depending on you know how long you're making your jacket 
And um, yeah, like I said, tailor those 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 decreases to whatever you want for the shape of your jacket. I'm going to um, so I'm going to do a decrease here. Now it's not going to show up with this yarn, so I'm going to leave you to um, have to leave you to check out a video of a double cro crochet decrease if you need. Oops, excuse me. If you need to for um, you know the double crochet decrease because it's just not going to show up in this yarn so I'm going to do that decrease uh, so I just did one there at the beginning I'm going to do one like I said at the end I'm going to do one in the center and I might do that every row I might do that every second row I'll kind of see how it's shaping out okay and you'll you'll do the same you know you might want um, you know a, a straighter shaped jacket than than what I'm making I kind of want mine to kind of taper in a little bit now, the other thing that um, I should have perhaps mentioned before um, when we were doing this row is you can actually, you could have, and like I said, I apologize that I didn't mention it before. Or I think I might have mentioned it earlier in the video. I can't remember. But you can actually add a third band here if you want to. Okay. Um, it's not too late now. If you've done this, you could just tie on your yarn and just, you know, make a chain and then, then, do it here it's easier to do it of course when you're actually in this section but you it's not too late you could do it now um yeah like I said I hope I mentioned that earlier if you want to add that you know another band here that that um, wraps around the belly then that would be um you know you could totally do that as well but anyway let's let's move on and finish off this jacket so you go ahead and do the number of rows that you want to finish off um, I'm going to go about the same as what I've done here and uh, yeah I'll meet you once we've done that and then from there we're just going to add our border so we're going to continue on with our fluffy yarn and we're going to add a border around all of this here okay so uh, yeah continue on and I'll meet you soon okay so I'm at the length that I want now so now we're going to go ahead and add that border so um, you'll just continue, if you've finished on your fluffy yarn, you'll just continue with your fluffy yarn. And we're just going to place single crochets along the border. So they'll just, they're not in any stitches per se, but they'll just be placed evenly spaced along the border until you get right round. So I'm going to work right round along here I'm going to work around my belly band along this side I'm actually going to double up on the border that I've done here okay because I want a little bit of extra fluffiness around the neck and then I'm just going to continue all the way around the edges until I get back now you could stop here on this side but I'm actually going to add an extra um, an extra row at the end here because I've allowed for that okay so um, yeah if you if you're happy with the length and you don't want to add that extra row at the end you can just stop over here um, otherwise you'll go all the way around to where you started and uh, add that border now to say this border is is optional but I think it's really important to um, just finish off the jacket in this way I think certainly it's it's important to finish off around here but um, you'll see that it'll really bring the whole look together. So um, go ahead and do that. And you can work in tails as you go and, um, you know, clean up your garment. And just when you're around working around these side bits, just probably what's going to be best, or even though your, your feather yarn or if you've, you know, your fluffy yarn is going to be quite forgiving, you probably want to avoid going into the holes. Okay, you want to go more into the center of those edge stitches and that will just keep things a little bit neater as well so you go ahead and finish that and I'll do the same and I'll see you sh shortly okay so I'm just finishing off here I've finished my way around the border so I'm just snipping off my end there that's a tail end I can snip off and of course we're going to have to weave in that end I've worked in all my other ends I've just got this this one to weave in at the bottom here which is super easy with this yarn 
So just weave in any of your ends that are left. And then we've just got to add the buttons. And we're done. So I'll just quickly pull this through. There we go. And then we'll... So you'll need to take those measurements to work out where you'll add your buttons. Okay? So you'll measure from the buttonhole down to where you need... So down to where the, the next circumference of your cat falls. So for Melba, measuring from the buttonhole, hers is about 24. And I want to allow a couple of extra centimetres. So it's going to be that post there. So I'm going to sew using my, using my pink yarn. Okay, so I've just got a length of my pink yarn there on my small needle. And I'm just going to sew this button where I need it to be. So allow a little bit extra um, from the next circumference because, um, you know, especially if you're going to have a harness underneath, you just want a little bit of extra, extra leeway. And it's good to have just that little bit extra so it's not too tight as well. So you'll go ahead and you'll sew on both of your buttons and you'll do the same measurement with your with your belly button. So I'm going to finish that off um, and yeah I'll finish sewing on this button and then I'll sew on my other button down here and I'll see you once I've done that. And then once you've sewn your button on nice and securely what you can do is you can just do a double a simple double knot at the back here once again just to make sure that it's nice and secure and then you'll weave in these two ends okay so I'll see you soon okay so once you've sewn on your buttons nice and securely you're done so I think that's a super cute little winter jacket for your for your cats so please send along your photos to catventurers.community at gmail.com or you can tag us on social media at catventurers.com crochet so I'd love to see your cat wearing his or her poodle jacket so thanks so much for being here and we'll see you soon bye thanks Melba you're awesome mm, you're awesome are you mad you want to get down mm. you do so well Your eyes match my jumper. Good job. You want a fishy? Yeah? You want a treat? You did good. You always do good. <laughs> you are such a good girl. Thanks, baby. Get your treat? Okay, let's do it.